Front stoop, what's poppin'? It's your boy. We're about to get into this biggie. I got a story to tell. And look, I was about to say the untold story again, but biggies, I got a story to tell. The documentary that's been on Netflix. We're about to get into it. But I know you expected me, Tony, and Savvy to be live. But YouTube did not remove the strike yet. Don't worry, it's gonna be removed. It's just taking a little bit longer than expected. But yo, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell so you can be notified when I am live. But let's get into this documentary, ladies and gentlemen. I got my guys here, Tony Crow, Savvy D in the building. And we're going to go ahead and break this thing down, ladies and gentlemen. Biggie, I got a story to tell. Did you guys watch the documentary? Yes, sir. Shout out to the chat, son. Oh, as always, shout out to you, Savvy. What's popping? Um, yes, I, I saw it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, you know, as I said off air, I only had one right, and that was um, you know, the lack of, you know, Little Kim's lack of involvement and and, and her pretty much not being mentioned. Um, but other than that, you know, I learned some things I didn't know. Uh, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah. And that's yeah, she up, wasn't mentioned at all. I mean, she, there were some pictures, but, and I was waiting, you know, they talked about junior mafia, right? Yeah. Uh, no mention at all. I mean, there was really no mention at all of any other rappers besides yeah. maybe some of his influences. You know, there was really, you know, they, they kind of eluded the Jay-Z at some part. There was no mention of Nas in there at all. Him and Nas really didn't do much together anyway or have a connection anyway. Um, but there really wasn't a mention of many other rappers. But Savvy, did you watch it or get a chance to watch it? I did get a chance to see the beginning. I saw probably the first 20, 30 minutes. But I have been I have been a bad uh, a bad rap student. I haven't done my homework, you know what I mean? Like, I still got to finish Hip Hop Uncovered. I'm probably at the end of the first episode on that one. You ain't doing it, You know what I mean? And then, and then I got a story to tell. You know, every time I sit down to watch it, it's like the universe got something else for me. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. But what we could do is we could treat this like you guys giving me an education in the things that I do not yet know about the notorious B.I.G. No and just now I got a little bit sad when you mentioned Nas Sim, just because I've always wanted this exact type of a doc to be done about Prodigy. Mm. And they had great collabs together. The the Mob Deep and Nas connection, the stories there. Whew. I mean, you know what? Let me stop giving I ideas. Mean, I mean, Prodigy just, did you know drop I mean? a book. I read that book right. twice. Pro yeah, I mean, I got the book sitting here on my shelf. Prodigy did drop a book, so you can kind of... And there's an audio book, so you can actually hear Prodigy tell you the stories in the book. You know what I mean? So that is I dope. I did not that is know dope. that there was an audio book. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. is so entertaining. That's dope. I listen to the book in full. <laughs> yeah, that's dope, and, uh, bro. It's, it's, it's very entertaining, I would say that. Oh, y'all just made my day. I yeah, that, that is dope. But, um, you know, listen, this is another story, another documentary about Biggie. You know, there's a million of them out there. There's movies, there's documentaries and, uh, you know, stories about Biggie and Pac. I think what sets this one apart is it's it comes from the mouth of the people closest to him. Right. So I think that sets it apart because all of the, everything else that you saw um, came from outside sources. Right. You know, it, with interviews to Diddy, to his mom. Um, but this came from sources. Right. Um, which which to me. I was it does kind of set it apart from uh some of the other some of the other documentaries that are out there. Go ahead, Savvy's about to say something. 
Oh no, I was I was just I, I had a thought. I was just so happy to see v Voleva, you know, just just talking and energetic and like, you know, like like living and well and she, she looked like she she's well taken care of and everything like that. Like, you know, that that brought me real joy just to see her, you know what I'm saying? And it does me you know, it, it it does give me pleasure that that he was able to to at least you know get his mom's right, you yeah. know, before his untimely demise. Right, right, and and you know the the documentaries, I mean, a lot of it is based on footage that was recorded by D Rock. You know when you know from the time they were, from the time Biggie was was on the street to when they were on tour, you know what I'm saying? So like you really get to see some of the, you know, some of the things that are inside of, 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 you know, how they worked together, you know? So a lot of good footage that hadn't been seen before, you know, uh, which is, which is always, which is always fun. If you're a hip hop head, you're a hip hop fan for any artists out there, it's always nice to see some of this footage that you've never seen before. Uh, but you know, some of the things, Oh, go ahead, Tone. I, I was just gonna say for for the young up and coming you know artists, you know the thing right now is to always have the camera out. But I mean, it, sound advice is as long as you're not committing a crime, man. I say record everything, Word. document everything, because right. you never know what what the value will be in in the future. Exactly. You know, and even even you behind the scenes guys, you exactly. know the the. Record everything, man. Exactly. And, and you know, um, just a couple of things about the documentary that stood out to me that I didn't know about Biggie, which uh, really, you know, stuck with me. One, uh, the fact that he had, he, he was influenced by jazz music. Not just jazz music. We'll talk about some of the other forms of music. But he was influenced by uh, Donald Harrison lived up the block and you know he said he would he would bring biggie in, into into his home and they would study jazz music and that when he heard biggie rapping he could hear the influence right in his in his cadence you know what i mean and it always strikes me um it always strikes me how so many of these artists you know had some kind of jazz background a lot of your greats biggie now we're learning you know had a jazz background from donald harrison uh he actually compared his cadence cool. to uh legendary uh drummer uh jazz drummer uh max roach you know and, and they show some footage of, of boogie rapping and they got the drummer in the background you know, uh, you know, drumming and, and comparing the, the cadence to the drums. Uh, of course, Nas, right? His pops. Um, Rock him has, uh, you know, some jazz and, and, and other forms of music in his background. There's many other artists out there as well. I can't think of them, think of them over the top of my head, that's, but there's a lot the of things. artists Guru. out there. Guru. Guru. It's a lot of artists out there that have this jazz background where someone in their family, uh, you know, play jazz and introduced them to jazz music. And then, boom, this became a big part of their life. And I didn't know that about Biggie. Yeah, I didn't know that about Biggie. So, that you That's know, that was, yeah, it is, man, because it, it really does let you know that jazz music is the forefather of hip hop. You know what I mean? It's the, Absolutely. The, yeah. Absolutely. And you know what? And when that part came on, because I did see that, that was like early on, right? Mm -hmm. They, uh, I, I wasn't necessarily surprised. I, I just didn't know that about Biggie. But once, once they said it, it made sense, right? Like some of the, so, so, some of the greatest and richest expression that, that I've ever heard, especially of like pain, comes from comes from the the old jazz, the the dirty jazz stuff like stuff like Robert Johnson and stuff like that that who who still get talked about 
to this day as like great guitarists. And I feel like just throughout the history of like any sort of black musical art form, there's always going to be that continuity where, where things will resonate with the current generation from that audio and, and spur forth new things that we feel like is unprecedented, but really, you know, somewhere down the line, we've come to find out, okay, the wit got lit at jazz, at whatever genre it was that sparked that in a, in a kid. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it, man. And, you know, Tony, you mentioned Guru. Um, think about the Jazzmatazz albums. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, uh, but but it, which, it's a lot of which artists. Was one, of, one of my favorite, one of my favorite albums at, at the time, ja Jasmine has the mm -hmm. original, the first one, um, and the the most <laughs> the most encouraging thing about it was, you know, I got to play it as loud as I wanted around the house. <laughs> my mom, <laughs> you know, my mom, my mom didn't have a problem with it, so that that was that was pretty cool. Right, um, right, just right. Just to touch on on that gentleman that. You know the jazz guy up the block. Um, not only did he have the musical influence on him, but you know he he kind of, you know, at some point had the influence to to get him off the street when he seen Biggie on the corner. You know, maybe not necessarily hanging with the right crowd or, or so. You know, he would he would grab grab him up and, and and you know, come on, let's go up the block, let's go. You know what I mean, let's go. You know, get away from the, this environment. So, um, you know, he did that until until he. No longer had that that uh that reach on him, but you know I just wanted to point that out as yeah. well. Yeah, and you know it's crazy because most a lot of black men that have been successful, and I'm just gonna you know obviously it's probably happened with you know other 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 groups, but a lot of black men that are successful always had somebody somewhere that said, "Hey, come with me," even if it was only for a little bit. And I'm talking about young men who maybe. You know, the fathers wasn't around for whatever the reasons are. You know, had somebody who snatched them up every once in a while and said, come with me because we're going to we're gonna walk away from this for a little while. We're going to do this, that, and the third. You know, and then maybe they still got out there because Biggie did. He still ended up getting out there. You know what I mean? But just that little bit of influence right there is enough to take you sometimes to where you want to go because you draw back as you get older and you maybe you get into a little bit of trouble this or that happens you draw back on some of those lessons you know what i mean and and you start to move forward you know uh of course biggie got the jamaican roots i love the way that they went back to his mother's roots you know to kind of explain and, and help you understand where biggie got uh, some of his soul from when it comes to his music you know what i'm saying uh and savvy you were talking about his uncle you know how he spent time with his uncle um you know when his uncle was was doing his thing and you know so he took that influence and then he he brought back what, what was funny to me is that uh um i think it was d-rock who was talking about how yeah it was d-rock how biggie would come back with all this different kind of music every summer Right, country music, and this, slang. that, and slang. And that Biggie, at a younger age, about... at a younger age, <laughs> would go to sleep listening to country music. You know what I'm saying? Would I go to sleep listening to, to country music. Oh, my. Said he exactly. couldn't sleep without it. Couldn't sleep, couldn't without, sleep it. without it. Couldn't sleep without it. Couldn't sleep without it. For a period of time. That blew me, dog. I was like, yo, like, are they talking about country music, country music? Country music, country like, music. Yeah, you know, you my know wife left me. My Cause... wife left me. My dog ran away. And I got a hole in my roof, country you know? music. Oh, <laughs> you know God. what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, God. Country music, country music. <laughs> that is fascinating. And, and... Another thing that another thing that blew me was like how how young he was going to Jamaica, meeting his grandmother, meeting his uncle, and then his uncle was doing music, and and they was hitting it off, 
and then how his uncle sort of facilitated him to sort of became, become a vocalist, right? And like, and like do that in like a public forum like that, where this is a party night, you feel me? And they even show you the pictures of like how they set the party up and the booth and everything like that. And I was like, man, imagine just being a kid and having this, having these these obstacles to overcome, of course, but also having this wealth of experiences, you know, culturally. And and these moments like being able to get on the mic and and like rap with, with your uncle a, as a young child and being able to build that confidence and then do something in front of a crowd and 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 just how like it seemed like from from just that previous thing about his jazz influence and the guy that lived down the street to to that you, you kind of get the sense that everything he's go, he's experiencing is priming him for 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 what's to come yeah yeah like no almost doubt deliberately no doubt no yeah. doubt um and you know you know to add to that he probably couldn't even appreciate what was going on at the time you exactly know, you know what i mean as, as a young kid so yeah exactly and and i i i wish that because you've seen it with nas right when nas was younger when he made his first few albums you didn't hear him talk about or say anything about you know really allude to his dad and and and, and allude to older music that influenced him but as he started to get older you know obviously nas's dad was on um uh, a life's a bitch right but as you get older he started to talk about it a little bit more right the the, the jazz influence and you know going down in natchez mississippi and and you know he had other songs where he talks about older artists older r&b artists jazz artists that had an influence on him and i can guarantee you as biggie would have gotten older that would have started to come out in his music not and i'm not saying stylistically but just speaking about it and like you said tony he probably didn't understand um what was happening then and the influence that he was having that was ha that was on him then but as he would have gotten older he would have recognized it and i guarantee you would have came out in his music right that's the one thing i mm -hmm. always i'm always like damn i wish i knew what biggie was going to sound like today you know would he have would his music have it evolved which it would have ain't no doubt about it because it already started to evolve uh on his second album you know what i'm saying life after death it already started to evolve evolve a little bit um you know uh unfortunately imagine, we didn't get a chance to imagine, hear that but imagine having him and hove around in their late age well not their late age in their current age right what it would be at at this point in time still rapping actively yo what like, what you... like hope is still let me ask you this hope this is, is still scaring people off yeah with this, is, this is crazy one to think about what would have happened during the Nas and hove beef with biggie if biggie was alive i mean would there have been a beef with there probably would have been a beef. Would it have been, or maybe it wouldn't have been a beef because Biggie would have been recognized by the, the community for the most part as I'm um, the top dog. You know what I'm saying? Uh, would it have been a beef with Nas and I, Hove? Or, or maybe it would have like been a beef. beef. Still happens. You think so? I mean, obviously there were things well, that happened I think, uh, personally between the two that led to the beef. So, so am I am I recalling this wrong? But Jay Z was supposed to be part of the commission, yes. Jay Z, or, or 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 was he not? I don't I don't know if he was supposed to be part of the commission. I I don't know. I don't know. I know or he was. Wanted... That, or was that just was that Big's own label? So Big was Big thought... in the documentary. They talk about how Big wanted to start his own label, the commission. He wanted to move, you know, he wanted to grow into that part of the music industry. 
I don't know if Jay, I don't remember if Jay was supposed to be part of the commission or not. I know Jay wanted to be part of the firm. <laughs> and Nas was Nas was like, nah, I'm, you know, nah, you know, I'm not with it. You know, which was which was stupid on Nas' part, in my opinion. I mean, I get no. it, the whole, but that was dumb, in my opinion. Just imagine if it was Nas, A Z, Foxy, and Jay Z. I didn't know. I, I yo, you you said that just now, and I was like, what, bro? Jay Z wanted to be part of the firm. Yes, he wanted to be part of the firm. As a matter of fact, uh, damn, I, I, on what album? What happened was, I think Foxy and AZ was on a song with Jay. I think, I don't know if it was Reasonable Doubt. I don't remember what, it wasn't Reasonable Doubt. I don't uh, remember what song. I, I don't, I'm trying to remember back. I, no, I'm sorry. That wasn't on a song. That was in the video. I forgot what video okay. it was. That was in the video. The I Monopoly, forgot. With the, when they was playing Monopoly with Real Money. Exactly. They was in that video too. That was in the video. And it was, AZ was in the video. Foxy was in the video. Um... And, and I can remember looking like, yo, what's up? Why? Like, because the firm was popping. It's like, well, where, well, where's Nas? At that time, you know, it, well, I don't think it was really clear to everybody because on Reasonable Doubt, Jay was always dropping Nas. You know what I'm saying? You know, who's the best MCs? Biggie, Z, Jay-Z, and Nas. I, like, it was always, you know, you felt like maybe the two was cool. But I don't know, Savvy. Maybe you don't know everything. But it really it started to fester when... Jay Z was supposed to have, he wanted to have Nas on Dead Presidents. Instead of Nas's wow. voice being sampled, it was supposed to be Nas actually doing yeah. the hook. But Nas never showed up to the, to the, you know, to the studio. And I think that kind of, that's where it kind of started to fester. And then, of course, like Jay frequently would have Nas in his music. And then, you know, snowball from there you know things going on behind the scenes that we don't know about obviously jay and carmen and all of that so i guess it would have happened anyway but where would biggie have stood i, I think i think one brooklyn i think he would have wrote i think he would have wrote if he didn't try to defuse it he would have wrote with jay I, I i feel like i feel like but on the flip side this is how my hip hop brain works. I think Nas would have had reinforcements. Not, exactly. Not, not not only with Queens, but I think Wu Tang would have jumped right mm. up in there. Oh like, yeah. Yo. Oh yeah. That would have been. <laughs> yes. That would have been nuts. Yes. That would have been nuts. Yeah. Because he would have had the Ray. Chef and Ghost. He would have had Ray Kwan and Ghost. Because there was already Ghost. there was already there was already oh Biggie biting off a of Nas boom. Listen. Yeah, that let, would have been. Let's be real though. All, that might have been crazy. All you need is ghost. Yo, ghost that might have. over. Yo, that would have set. That would have been nuts. That would have set. That would have set hip hop. You talk about setting it on fire. If Biggie would have stepped in and bid with Hove, yeah, I can guarantee you, Wu would have stepped in and bid with Nas. That would have been. That, that would have been, been crazy. Hit. That would have been a hip hop civil war right there. That would have been crazy right then, there. You know, me, you know, Method Love Big. So I don't know how that would. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was already on, ready to die. Exactly. It, you know, I don't know how that would have. Uh, you know, and he might he might have stayed in neutral corners, but Ray would have been with Nas all day. Oh uh, yeah. Question, question. Why does everybody always mention the what, right? But they never talk about rap phenomenon. Which rap? What's rap phenomenon? Method Man and Biggie again. That was That's on, the one on, on Meth on Meth the Meth record. No, I think it was one of the posthumous Biggie. Oh, films. okay. Um, but I don't may, know when it was recorded. It may. It, I I have to look it up. Is that on the? But it, it may have been the post. Yeah, yeah the post mortem. The Biggie duets. Uh, I, I, yeah, it might have. Uh, yeah, I think it, it might have been Biggie something duets. that the general population heard. Biggie right. already. Right. Right. So really? so the I got more Glocks and text than you. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, wait, oh no, yeah. No, See, no, that's... no, wait. The um I literally listened it's to the... that album one time. And I think there was one verse on that whole album that I I'm, might have I'm familiar with. I might have just screwed up the name now that I'm thinking about the verse off of the what. 
but but I, the, yeah, I'm trying there's to... Method Man's Method Man's verse, right? It goes. It goes, uh, that's the one where he says, Star Wars, I'm Han Solo with three egos and three charges. I got the C3 POs. Yeah. This is whoop your ass, they the sequel. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, everybody I know that critiqued that album critiqued it based only off the features. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like every, every biggie verse on there was, I mean, obviously it was old, but I, you know, was familiar. Yeah. He he. That's one thing that, again, all you new up and coming artists, um, you know, you never know what's gonna happen in the future. Record as much as you can. Let mm-hmm. you know. Learn from learn from Tupac. <laughs> Re- wow. You know, record as much as you can wow. and have have that stuff ready to go, in case you know, knock on wood, God forbid, something happens. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But yo, but that, nowadays, tone people get their backlog and they just put everything out. Th- there's nothing to sit on because it's all out. Yeah, that's true. We're all just dropping that's free true. music. That's true. That, that's a problem too. Yeah. And then hoping that 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 something catches fire. But go on, sir. Now I was gonna say it's just crazy to think that you would have had Nas and Woo and then Biggie and Jay. That would have been nuts. And then Jay would have had his click. And then of course Junior Mafia would have been involved. Would have been. It would have been. Yeah, you talk about a hip hop. New York City, Yo. East Coast yeah. Civil War. Whew, that joint would be crazy, boy. I, I, you know, I'm gonna tell you a little. Queens can beef with each other all day long. But then, but then, let, but queens, then they, they, they gonna Voltron up. <laughs> yeah, you know, yo, that joint would be nuts, come man. Under assault. That that would have been nuts. I always think thought about that though. You know what what would have happened with Biggie? Obviously, it would have happened. But part the reason, the only reason why I asked would it have happened is because. Part of their beef, too, was, okay, who's got the spot now? You know what I'm saying? Um, it would have been but, crazy if it if it happened a couple years later. And and you got and you got Beanie Siegel and Freeway in the mix. You got you got uh locks in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Who were bad boy at one point? Mm-hmm. Okay. Listen, I mean, I mean, some some people would have stayed out of it. Some people would be like, "Nah, I'm not. This this is this is a little bit too high profile for me. I'm not. <laughs> I ain't even. I ain't, I'm, I'm I'm out. I'm out. I'm nah. I'm not with it. I'm MCs with can't it. resist. Some so, pe- some people would have stepped. Some people would have stepped back. Method Man might have stepped back. Some people would have stepped back. Um, Beanie Siegel said that he went at. He, he went at them because he was like, "Yo, this is a chance to get my name up." Like, yeah, well, yo, well I I'm mean, gonna, but he was with the Rock, so of course he was. You know, he was going, he was going to get in it. And I'm sure he was encouraged. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course. Of course. Um, that's beans, though. But then, of so course, you know, uh, the documentary man, you know, is going to dive into the streets, dive into the streets a little bit. Uh, if anybody who you know, heard Biggie's music and heard him, you know, mention I God, um, and you know, didn't really know who he was talking about. The documentary explains it for you a little bit who I God was. Um, you know, when he talk about his his, his buddy uh, Oli that you know got killed, and, and and that's when Biggie was really like, yo, I, I I'm not going back to this. You know, I'm trying to you know really do something different. Um, he had Easy Mo B, who was another one of those people, man, who would see Biggie mm-hmm. out there and be like, "Yo, I'm gonna, let's get you up out of here. We're gonna, we're gonna take you and we're gonna do something else." You know, of course, you know, he said he would have beats or whatever in the car, uh, you know, so for him to listen to, but he would really pull them out, you know, to make sure he wasn't, you know, gonna go down with the rest of the crew. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, man, that was it, it, it's a wonderful documentary. It's a good documentary. I think you need to watch it. Um, hey Sim, real quick, one of one of my favorite parts of the documentary, and again, this shows how sick my brain is sometimes. But uh, when his mom found the dried up mashed potatoes, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, yeah, yeah, this, I was this, waiting for that part. Yo. Um, and of course, if you watch Notorious, if you watch Notorious, it's in the movie Notorious too. 
Right. I was uh, on uh, that well, I mean, it, yeah, that's the craziest part. It, it just shows you like where, like his mom was not in tune with the streets at all. You, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't in tune with none of that, um, at all. And, and matter of fact, she she cursed him out mm-hmm. after he was already passed away. When when she Ex- you know yeah. when she found out. Right. Right. When she found out. When she found, and, and you know what? I was thinking when she talked about that, right? And, and 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 I was thinking to myself, if anybody complains about that, that she has the right, she has every right in the world to still be mad at her son if she wants to. You know what I'm saying? There's Absolutely. no doubt, it should be no doubt in anybody's mind that she loves her son. But if anybody has the right to be mad at their son, she does. And it's a moment of of madness. It wasn't like she was, right, you know, right, right, right. It wasn't um, she yeah. cur- cursed them literally, but, right? You know what I mean? She said, right. "This mother," <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? He had he disrespected my house. My house? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Disrespected my house. And um, anybody who ever got caught with some dried up mashed potatoes, you know, what were you know. know what I'm saying? You already know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can remember, you know. T- I can remember my grandmother when my grandfather passed away, you know, when I was at the house, maybe a week later. And, you know, she, she's like, you know, like I think a bill came in of a camera that he had bought, you know what I'm saying? And she was heated. She was like, he's dead and he's still doing this. Like she was heated, (laughs) but you know, but, but it, it was still, it was like, yo, if anyone could be mad, she's allowed to be mad. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, you know, it's still love. You know what I mean? One hundred exactly. It's still love. Exactly. You know, Man. um, but yeah, you know, it, it's a really good documentary, and it, I I just loved hearing his mom. You know, really be able to be there and tell a story from her perspective and the way that she's seen. Of course, we've seen it in other documentaries, but you know, this was executive produced by her and and uh and and Puffy. You know, so it was great to be able to hear it from her perspective, you know, and, and again, you know, I've, as I've heard the story plenty of times, you know, she said, you know, as she was, as she was, as they were riding through Brooklyn and they seen everybody out and she, that's when she really recognized the impact of Bay, you know, and, and how many people just loved him and the way his voice was able to t- reach millions of people. And you so. know what I re- you know what I really really enjoyed about about it? it it kept it stayed positive throughout you know even when they mentioned Pac even when they you know when they mentioned Biggie's untimely passing it they didn't harp on it they didn't dwell on it they didn't dig into it you, you know it, it it was really a small part of of the story you, you know and, and that that. That was a, a breath a breath of fresh fresh air. Yeah. Um, yeah, no doubt they, about they it. They didn't touch on really any any negativity. And right. you know, may, maybe maybe that's you know one of the reasons Kim wasn't in, involved. I, I know you mentioned uh the relationship between Big's mom and, and Kim. So, you know, I I, I I understand it. But I just at the very least, just a, a mention of, of her of her name, I think would have would have did. You know a little bit more justice but overall man I, i'll give it i'll give it a, a good nine out of ten yeah and, and, yeah. and that's with you know that's with all of the other things we've seen already yeah and you know i think that maybe they just didn't want to go there right because yeah. if you mention you know, you, you know you mention their name and, and and it's along the lines of this story or that story then it's like you know, nah, I wasn't this way. Nah, I wasn't that way. So uh, maybe they was like, you know, let, let's just let it alone. And you know, the big reason why Junior Mafia is mentioned is mentioned really is because Lil C's was running with Big before they was Junior Mafia. Right. And and just to so, touch on one last thing, uh, when when C said, "Hey Big, who who's Junior Mafia?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. He's like that's y'all. Man. That, that's y'all, man. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, it's crazy. Big was a remarkable dude, man. Everybody loved him. 
I was I just would love to hear and, and understand um where he would be today as far as you know the type of music he would be making and stuff like that and what he would have done um business wise outside, of, too, outside of music you know what what would Biggie be you know so, I I definitely got the sense as I was watching it that that like the the creators of this documentary definitely have like have love for for Biggie like it seemed like it seemed like a a loving way to to tell somebody's story and just the stuff that they choose to highlight especially in the in the early parts of his life and the tidbits about his childhood and what kind of kid he was like right. it really felt like an embrace of his legacy right well you know when you got when you have the closest your closest loved ones uh being the executive producer you know that's how it that's how it should come out right you know that's and um so it, it was it was definitely it was definitely good man um, and of course, it always leads to the question: Is Biggie the best ever? Always leads to that. It's always going to lead to that question, you know. Uh, now, of course, they don't pose that. They don't really pose that at all in the documentary. But anytime you start talking about Biggie, it's going to come down: Is he is he the best to ever do it? You know, uh, and, and really, it's going to be to each his own. You know what I'm saying? People are gonna have their own personal favorite five. You know, uh, for me, Biggie's in there. Uh, of course, Nas is my personal favorite overall. Rockham, Jay Z, Biggie. You know, uh, Pac for me used to be in there. We was just talk about this, right? Pac used to be in there. Um, you know. You know, Pac before All Eyes on Me was my guy. That was like him, him and Nas. You know, had a really big influence on me. But then when Pac started messing with Suge and he put out All Eyes on Me, I was disappointed because I was like, "Yo, my man just totally flipped the script of who he was. Just came out and be like a whole new person." And 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 I started feeling like, "Yo, he's a little bit fake to me." See, son, I I had. All right, before before I get into Pac, let me let me just start with Big real quick because mm -hmm. you know I have a unpopular take where he's you know not really in my the top five. I think I had him six, six on my on my list. Um, so so we got Nas, we got Pun, we got Jay, we got Pac, we got KRS, we got uh Big. Even though he's not in my my top five, I, I do believe that Big has the greatest hip hop record ever created, and, and, and that is Juicy. Like the that cadence, is crazy. I love that. Joke. The, the the story, like it, you know, I think that is a timeless record. Um, and I think that's yeah, top top hip-hop record of, of all time and, um, and you know i don't mean to cut you off you know i think i i think the story i don't know if it was big who told the story on another documentary or if it was puffy who told the story but big didn't even want to he didn't want to rap over that the sample thought it was going to be too soft which which surprises me now when, when we watch this documentary because they say, you know, Big was always going around singing R&B joints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? He, you know, he didn't even listen to rap. He listened to old R&B. But, you know, right. so so then I remember back like, hmm, that seemed a little crazy that he didn't want to rap over the Juicy joint. But, you know, I'm sure, you know, if he was still alive today, he'd be like, yeah, I'm glad I did. And then, you know, another thing, just real quick, uh, Tone, you know, Life's a bitch was supposed to <laughs> was supposed to have that juicy sample. Mm. Right? Life's a bitch was supposed to have that Nas's really? life life's a bitch was supposed to have that juicy sample. Uh I guess I forgot. I don't remember who he was who he was with, but when it was making the beat, um, 
they wasn't able to get to the joint so they can get the record. So they, you know, so they went with what they had and it turned out perfect for both records. So yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. and then back just real quick, back to the, the Tupac man, like, I, I don't, I, I was saying, you know, off camera, I think that, I think that double album, man, I think that's his best body of work. I think, he was he was on a, a mission to prove he could actually be successful and 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 sell records. I think that was the best production he had up to, up to that point throughout his career. Um, and you know, similar to you know how people always call Nas a a, a hypocrite or or, or, or challenged his. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like that was, you know, him giving all sides of 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 everything. Yeah, I, you know? I mean, so, I, I I get it. I just felt I felt like, and, and don't get me wrong, don't don't hate, don't get mad at me out there, people. <laughs> I I love Tupac, but I felt like that album. I was like, this ain't the Tupac that I was listening to on Tupacalypse Now with Me Against the World, or you know. And I was like, what happened? You know, um, I guess you could say, you know, he was, I felt like it was Suge. I felt like he went with Death Row and it was like, nah, we need you to do. This is what we want you to do. Because then, you know, when the Machiavelli joint dropped, I felt like, oh, this is, this is, this is the That's Tupac him. that, this is Tupac right here. You know what I mean? Um, I, I felt like, I, and maybe he just needed to get it out. He was, he just, he was in prison. Maybe he just needed to get all the ignorant shit out, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then just get back to, cause even in his regular records, he still had a little bit of ignorant shit in there, you know, you know, he showed, he showed different sides. Uh, but I just felt like, I was like, damn, he went full blown ignorant on this mug. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a couple of joints, but he went full blown yeah. ignorant. He on did, this joint, you know, man. But I was you like, gotta God, admit, damn, man, the, the quality but, of the music was 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 top notch. I mean, the production was the production was there. There were some joints where I just didn't like the songs itself, a couple of them. But I mean, the the, the production was, was definitely there. Uh, I mean, I could just hear that freaking death row influence all over. And then when Machiavelli yeah, dropped, I was like, this is pop. Right here, this, this, this is this is Pac, but uh, well, Machiavelli is my favorite Pac album. But I I think you know being being objective, I think All Eyes on Me is his best okay. body of work. But you know, like, Pac Pac had like a million different sides anyway. So you know what I mean? That man had you know a million different sides. But but at that time, I really I really at that time I was like, damn man, you're like Pac just faked out on me. What happened? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, he just he just faked out on me on this joint, uh, you know. I, I still rock with it, but not like you know the other joints that I would that I was rocking with before. You know, I just felt like it's how annoying is it? How annoying is it that that's the main side of pop that most people like recognize and are aware of and celebrate and like and like uh, champion. But like, for example, and this stems from a conversation I had when I went to LA for the first time. So it was kind of weird setting to have the conversation finally. But there was a dude that that like was talking about him like 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 Tupac the gangster. And I'm and I bring up the other sides of him, and it's almost like a resistance to the possibility that he was more than that. And I right. was and I was just kind of irritated. I'm like, yo, like. For most of his life, he wasn't like that. He you know wasn't. what I mean? Like, you feel me? Like, there's clips of him when he was young talking talking about stuff that mattered to him in a in a genuine and sincere way. And he was a very like deep thinker. Yeah, when when you hear when you listen to him on you know, uh, Tupacalypse now, strictly for Brandon's my niggas. Got a baby. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right, you know, uh, me against the world. You know, he was that real introspective, a thinker, um, 
You know, he had he had his ignorant sides to him, but I guess I guess being you know listen, all eyes on me came out when he was in prison. He had to get all that you know he let it all out in the double album. Said I'm gonna get all this shit out, and then hey, I do you know. Brenda's got a baby is the very first song that I, that I ever heard from Tupac, and I I ain't even gonna lie like it, it was on video music box. <laughs> Of all, of all of all places, and and I remember, like just being mesmerized by by the video, by the by the lyrics, and and sitting there and waiting for it to actually come on again, because I, I wanted to you know go back in and, and, and analyze it some more. It was it was like a I don't want to say a horror movie, but it was like a movie of the struggle. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and. and, and it just blew my mind. I, I I would have to do the math and see what what year that was to find out how old I was. But I know I was relatively young. Um, and, and the influence I think Pac might have been the biggest influence on me as as far as life. Yeah. Like, as far as his music and my life, he's probably had the the biggest influence nah, by I, far. I. Uh, I'm with you. Um, Tupacalypse Now, that that album there was, um, I mean, the, the entire joint just influenced the way that I thought at that at that point in time. And when I, mean, he I, said, I love that album. That's that's Me Against the World is my favorite album from Pop, and then after that is Tupacalypse Now. When when he said, um. We old enough to go to war, but ain't old enough to drink. <laughs> like, like the 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 perspective that he opened up in, in my brain, you know, like, like right, man, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I, like I never, like I could put my life on the line, you know what I mean, for for for, for this country. But you know, <laughs> he telling me I can't, I can't have a sip, even right. if I come back. If I'm, you know, what I mean, just came back from war, like. If anybody deserve a drink, you know what I mean? Yeah, but like for me, the whole message of trapped, you know, the the joint violent on, on, on Tupac, like that whole message just resonated with me, you know, at that time uh, for, for me, you know, but. Um, and, he, and the other one was, yeah. you got enough, you, what he said? I, I, I can't quote it word for word, but basically saying, we got enough money for these wars, but we can't we can't like feed the homeless and, and right and, and and like <laughs> like he just opened my mind to like yeah yeah exactly you know, exactly you know it ain't right out here <laughs> yo could you imagine if Pac Biggie Nas and if Pac and Biggie was alive right now I can guarantee you we would have gotten a record from those four. We might have got a self destruction. You know what I'm saying? We might have got something from those four. Might have, for real. But, you know, if we would have got a record from those four, of course, nowadays, you know, you can probably find, uh, you can go on YouTube or whatever and find some mixes with the three, with the four of them together. But imagine a real joint with all four of them. That joint would have been, that would have been crazy. That would have been, that would have been super dope. And he was great at concepts uh, along with, Along with nine, so like a concept song with with with, with those two, and 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 again, like even the, the Biggie and, and, and Jay, you know, wow, that yeah. phenomenal. That would that would have been fun. Yeah, it would have been phenomenal. It would have been crazy. But uh, but anyway, look, man, this, this has been dope. We're gonna ha- go ahead and head up out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Again, we we apologize that we weren't able to be live. But as soon as we're able to go live, we'll be back on live. And we got a lot more stuff to talk about uh, when it comes to hip hop, society and life. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell uh, so you'll be notified anytime we go live. Tony, you got anything you want to send us off with? Um, well, when you watch the video, write in the comments and let YouTube know. Say free, free the front stoop. No doubt. Hashtag free the front stoop. No um, doubt. That's it, man. Your black is time. Shout out to the chat. 
Shout out to you guys, Sim. Keep doing your thing. Exactly. Savvy. Salute. Savvy. Stay up. Any last things you want to throw out there? You know what I'm saying? Stay up, stupas. We'll be back. Free the stoop. Another night of hip hop love. Hip hop, hip hop. Be easy. We out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Be peaceful. And spread love the Brooklyn way. Since we talk about Biggie.